Let's say we have our brain on life support in a vat. How do we make it think it's still living a normal life? We need to feed it information, stimuli, and read its outputs, its responses. Essentially, we need an interface, a bridge between biology and electronics, between mind and machine. Welcome to the world of brain-computer interfaces, BCI. This field is already very real and advancing every year. We're not yet uploading minds to the matrix, but we're making remarkable progress in connecting brains with computers. One area BCIs have shined is in restoring function to people who are paralyzed or otherwise unable to communicate. For instance, a device called BrainGate, developed in the 2000s, has allowed paralyzed patients to control a computer cursor or robotic arm just by thinking. This sensor is connected to a pedestal that is attached to the skull and protrudes through the skin. They implant a tiny array of electrodes into the motor cortex, the part of the brain that controls movement. When the person thinks about moving their arm or hand, the neurons fire and the implant picks up those signals and sends them to a computer which translates them into cursor movements or robotic arm movements. It's crude and takes practice, but it works. In one famous case, a woman fed herself chocolate using a robotic arm she controlled with her mind. That is straight up science fiction made real. On the sensor side we have things like cochlear implants, essentially early cyborg tech that's been around for decades. A cochlear implant takes sound from the environment and converts it into electrical signals sent straight to the auditory nerve, bypassing a damaged ear. The result? Deaf individuals can hear. It's limited, sound quality isn't great, and it doesn't restore normal hearing fully, but it shows the concept. We can feed digital information into the brain, and the brain interprets it as a perception. I was thinking about running to the store. What time will you be home? In about an hour. To not make me laugh. <laughs> Similarly, there are experimental retinal implants that can restore a bit of vision to blind people by electrically stimulating the retina or optic nerve with camera input. These produce crude patterns of light and dark, phosphons, in the person's vision. Again, it's not exactly the holodeck from Star Trek, but it's proof of concept that the brain can learn to make sense of artificial sensory data. Now ramp that up. Brain-computer interface researchers are working on more complex interfaces. Companies like Neuralink, founded by Elon Musk, talk about implanting thousands of tiny electrodes aiming for high bandwidth with communication with the brain. While a lot of that talk is speculative and yet to be proven, the direction is set. We want to both read from and write to the brain's sensory channels. If you can ever stimulate enough neurons in precisely the right way, you could create any sensory experience. It's a tall order. The brain has billions of neurons and trillions of connections, so replicating the full fidelity of natural experience is mind-bogglingly hard, but you might not need to get every detail for the brain to accept the illusion. Think about VR. Even with just sight and sound, imperfectly delivered through a headset and headphones, people can feel presence in a virtual world. With direct brain stimulation, 